<laughs> gentlemen, let's, let's get into the conversation. Over the weekend, um, you know, before the weekend, we had this uh, um, situation happening. Um, Republic Press says, um, data disaster not over, as NCA predicts five-week repair time. And um, businesses and individuals in the country are facing significant challenges as data service interruptions uh, persist due to faulty undersea cables. Now, the NCA, the National Communication Authority, has indicated that it may take up to five weeks um, for the cables to be repaired and stable connections to be restored in the affected countries. And a press release issued on Saturday, March 16th, 2024, the NCA revealed that the estimated timeline for full service restoration was provided after a meeting um, with the four subsea cable landing service providers, that's ACE, Main 1, SAT 3, and WACS. And so the story goes on there on page 3, and it's on. And then we also have it on City Newsroom, and other newspapers also carried it. Let me start with you, um, Mensa Thompson. Your, your thoughts on what has happened. Um, of course, disasters sometimes take you by surprise, but response time, five weeks, and all of that, well, what are your thoughts? Well, it's a very, it's a very peculiar, peculiar scenario. You know, <clears throat> I think last week was the first time people re realized how much our life depend on the internet mm. and how we become so you know reliant on the on the internet i mean f for some of us who use it for work and what have you i mean it was a bit disruptive mm. because a lot of things couldn't go on communicating with people outside the jurisdiction couldn't go on and uh, you know at the point i thought it was an internal problem until we started seeing this notice from the telco circulating and realized that it was a much bigger problem. Yeah. And so I think that we must begin to look at um, our digital infrastructure. Mm. And I'll come there in a bit. But by the way, uh, Dr. Baumia told us that uh, uh, about 70% to 88% of fiber optics cable have been laid since 2017. So, wh where is the uh, where is the internet? Where is the fiber optic cables that they've laid? Uh, Was he making reference to um, the the laying of cables within the country, or outside? because the problem that has come is the a feed to the, the country? The point I want to make is yeah. that I think that if we want to build a strong digital system yeah. and a digital economy, mm. the foundation must be set right. Yeah. The foundation of a strong digital ecosystem in the economy mm. relies on strong digital infrastructure. Yeah. And so we we'll expect that all the huge money spent in deals like, you know, uh, 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 Google uh, digital addresses, yeah. them, drones, Google map, uh, 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 Kelney GVG and mm -hmm. all those, you know, ridiculous contracts that mean serves no purpose to mm -hmm. the ordinary citizen. Mm -hmm. All those investments could have gone into digital infrastructure. And, you know, it's, it's, I mean, this incident have really, really exposed how vulnerable we are. Yeah. Not just as a country, but even in the sub-region. Yeah. Because if you see, about nine countries we are affected. have been affected mm. by this, uh, th th this accident. Mm. And if you have nine countries in the sub-region relying on just three or four, you know, cables, mm undersea cables for internet, we're in trouble. In Ghana, we, I think we have how many? Three that saves us, right? Yes. You know, we have about three that saves us. And all these ones are we have private. Four. We have four. four. All these ones are private owned. Mm. It's a consortium of telcos that owns some of these, what? Some of these. So what are the African governments doing? Yeah, good question. What have they been doing all this while? 
So assuming that these tackles now can find the resources and the ability, mm. and if you look at the nature of the areas that led to the accident, mm. you know, how volatile and, how, and the conflict within that jurisdiction, yeah. it would take some level of you know, diplomatic and governmental you know, involvement to get the issue resolved. And so it bears the question, ECOWAS. ECOWAS doesn't have its own network cables mm. providing internet to its members. So two or three African countries have not been able to come together to say, let's, let's lay a network cable for our country, to serve our country, and that the network cables that served us as a continent, especially in the sub-region, yeah. are all owned by a consortium of telcos and private individuals. Jesus Christ. I think that we failed, we failed ourselves. We really, really failed ourselves. You know, if telecommunication companies can come together and invest in such a huge infrastructure, yeah. and not one, not two, no two countries, no three countries, no four countries, not even the ECOWAS has been able to come together to provide themselves such a digital infrastructure, then I think that uh, shame on you, ECOWAS. Shame on you to the leaders. We have failed our people. We cannot continue to rely on private investors for some of these things. It is an <clears throat> affront to national and regional security. Assuming one day, yeah. there is no even an accident. These network cable operators, or who owns, or the people who own these cables say, yeah. oh, look, uh, we don't want to do business anymore. Like, we, are, we are shutting down. Yeah. We are disconnecting our internet cables. It means you are out. Yeah. As, a country, as a people, you are out. Yeah. Eh? How much money is having to be sunk in ridiculous, needless business adventures? You know, this experience that we're having now, this is not the first time we're having this. I think it was, it was in 2013 or so thereabouts in that region about 11, 12 years ago, um, we actually experienced one in the Atlantic where it, I think it was GLOW, around the GLOW, the time the GLOW had just come to Ghana and all of that, you know, and a line was cut, same thing, and the sea cable was cut and all of that. And we also experienced it, but then the level of internet penetration wasn't as much as now. And you know, that so didn't teach us any lessons. Thank you. That's what I was coming to. It didn't it tell us that we no, didn't learn in lessons from that one. We cannot rely on some of these things. There even there is even talks about uh, fiber optic cables mm. and running under the sea are not the only medium we can Ways provide internet. It. Yeah, there are satellites. satellites. Yeah, mm. and some countries depend only on satellite. So Ghana, we don't have a single one for ourselves. Mm. We don't, as a country. Yeah. Touting ourselves, digitalization, 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 digitalization. You don't have a single satellite. <laughs> so what are you digitalization on? <laughs> eh? What are you? Let me, let eh? me go and hear a uh, couple of these thoughts. Yes, I'll come but back you to see, you. Uh, I mean, um, it, it, it sounds funny, but this is a very serious issue. It is a serious issue. For me, I'm looking at it from a security point of view. Mm. We cannot continue. We cannot continue to rely on these third party network operators. Mm. Then the state must invest in digital infrastructure, its own digital infrastructure. One for security of communication, for total dependency, uh, sorry, independency, and access. It's, it, it's non negotiable. Mm. It is non negotiable. So that we do not one day wake up, and then today, it's not um, we won't give you loan at the IMF, or we won't approve World Bank, say we won't give you money, or UK say we won't give you aid. But somebody will come and tell us, well, if you don't pass LGBTQ, we are going to disconnect your internet cables. What are you going to do? <laughs> what are you going to do? <laughs> no, so, so I think that real independence must mean something to us yeah and we must begin to invest in the things that give us real independence, independence. as a okay. people and as a country All right. 
and reduce the dependency on other third party nationals and foreigners who provide some of these very, very, you know, essential services, mm. which we cannot for anything, no country yeah. who wants to develop will not take control of their digital infrastructure. Yeah. It's impossible. Right. We need to rethink our policy direction from now on. We must learn mm. very strong lessons from this experience and begin to put <clears throat> down the necessary infrastructure, yeah. necessary investment that will take us towards digital independence. All right. Um, Kozi? Yeah, I think this is unfortunate. <coughs> you, you didn't even realize it until this happened. Like you said, it's not the first time. Mm. It's happened before, and the lessons that were not learned, I mean, that makes it very, very worrying. We, we need to note this, that the truth is, look at some of the viewers who actually watch wonderful shows like this one. Mm. Because of this internet, you know, they will be, they will be, yeah, they will be yeah, left yeah. out there. You know, it affects your business as well. But let's talk about the internet. I mean, the, the, that digital world, it, it, it's actually taking a significant part of our lives. Mm. Right down from waking up in the morning, it keeps you company. <clears throat> People worship virtually. I mean, yeah. it starts their life, yeah. their business, making transfer of cash and everything else. And for, for some of the people who live on Momo and, you know, mm. from their support, supporters and sponsors, yeah. this was a very worrying trend, you know. And I had to actually look at it from that angle where businesses were suffering because they could not transfer money. It was very, very unfortunate. Well, I call it the, the this, this, this qualifies as internet doom, so right? <laughs> because for some of us, it was going on and off. Yeah. It, it, I mean, no, it, to, was. It, yeah, was. it was. Actually Throughout the weekend, it, it, it yeah, will come, so, then it's gone, then it will come, then it's gone. But I wonder if we will learn anything, you know. But Franklin, could you raise a very interesting point? That the one ton giveaways in the teleco sector, you know, one like that $178 million that we gave to, you know, uh, under Madam Osler's watch, we gave to tel uh, another company to come and actually fight crime that we don't have any record. Nothing has happened around that area. Mm. So you look at all those monies that people have come, Suba and all those contracts. If we kept all these monies, I'm sure we would have used some of this money to contribute to the ECOWAS, uh, you know, kitty, if they were going forward to build any satellite. Mm. It makes you miss a person like Kwame Nkrumah, who had a vision, mm. you know, to move along with satellite uh, in, in, in mind, mm. putting down the atomic station, mm. trying to get things done. And you wonder all these years, what have we done to ourselves, yeah. you know? And then the security threat is also visible. You could see if, if any, when we say security threat, somebody might think you're talking about war or something. No, 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 no. Cyber attack. But cyber attack and all yeah. those things yeah. can happen within a yeah, space. You can cripple your economy in seconds, literally. <laughs> so <laughs> the way forward, I think like he rightly said, the Equus country should team up and acquire some satellite facility for the sub-region. Which, 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 which is very important. It's late in the day anyway. And there's a need to protect our sub region from sabotage, mm. you know, and any under deals. The, some people have brought all their big multilateral companies here. And I mean, if you are using the internet to monitor some of these things and, and their supply, you know, and, you, and, and you, you lose on this thing for just about a week or two. Yeah. What are you going to do? You're going to use the, your hand to go and uh, measure the, the oil that is coming out or something? All these things can, you know, the sabotage can be that huge. Governments can also partner uh, local industries. I mean, some of these uh, rich, rich companies in Africa, yeah. you can bring them together and then talk to them about it. I'm sure they might want to venture into it. The only thing they might need will be government support, you know. Mm. And I, I think we, 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 we are somewhere we should look at I it. I mean, we have, a, we have a Ghana satellite air station in Kuntunse. Mm. Yeah. You know, I don't know why we won't, NCA won't look at this, mm. government won't look at this and say, why don't we beef up what is there mm. um, and expand it so that we have our own internet capability. Me, Meza, 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 from, me, me, from me, space. Me, me, Meza will shoot this one down but, from the... No, <laughs> no, but if they, do, <laughs> if they do that, how would they get money to go and give it to Kearney GVG? 
<laughs> yeah, if they go and put the but, money, but, but still at it, still at it. I think <laughs> How your proposal was wonderful. Billion. No, I they mean, can even <laughs> convince. You remember the like idea? Said, independence. Kwame it has said to be true independence. Uh, Ghana, Guinea, Mali. Yes, that yes, idea. Yes, yes. Just like uh, start with some, some two or three countries mm. come together. Look, oh, we have a facility. Mm. It needs this boost thing. Mm. We have this technical person. Yeah. Let them come together. Let's bring that international collaboration. All ECOWAS countries may not start it just once. I have had some experiences in international conferences where this Anglophone and Francophone divide thing, and I was amazed. Yeah. One people, mm. we were in the meeting, we started so well, we, I mean, we were enjoying the discussions. Then all of a sudden, for the leadership, then the Francophone and Anglophone thing stood out, you know, and, and I, I was sad. So, I mean, that's why I would want maybe two or three countries to start it. The rest, when they see it's working well, they might come on board and yeah. join. And then finally, like, look, I think we are opening ourselves up for, for sabotage. It will, it will totally be depending on people like this and still be talking about a liberated continent. Mm. Then this one will tell you, look at that, we are talking about after. Mm. So you are having trade among companies and, and FinTech is one, one strong thing that will drive the process. Yeah. So at the end of the day, if you are doing trade, you are doing business and you have to hold on for about three weeks or less, then that means it's a big deal. Let's liberate ourselves of this one. Okay. The money is important. Mm. Africa is not poor, I keep saying, and I'll repeat it. We are only poorly managed. All these monies that we are throwing away, mm. when you amass them together and bring them into a kitty, we can fix all these problems that we are having. But like he said, some of our problems are genuinely deliberately developed for us <laughs> so that you block the space and people make money from the suffering. All right, thank you very much. So Africa is not poor, we are only poorly managed. Yes.